everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're here for the very first time it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Jane, my husband Mike does everything behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, we've got no debt, we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty, frugal and money-saving life here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Wednesday we open our door and invite you in for a midweek money chat. Now I came back from the UK with this lovely souvenir of a head cold and today we're going to share with you how we prepare for and budget for being sick. So thankfully we don't get sick very often, in fact this is the first any kind of illness that I've had in two years and last time I got sick was Covid so this is nothing in comparison with that. So when we get sick, we don't want to be going out. We sometimes just want to be able to stay at home. That's for those of us who are not working. You know, if I was still in the employment world, I would be at work now, which is unfortunate, but that's the nature of the working world. But if those of us in my situation, like some of you are, maybe you are a stay at home person, maybe you work from home, or maybe you are retired. It's good to be prepared so if you do ever get sick, everything is at your fingertips and you do not have to worry about going out to get anything. Let's start with the obvious one of how we budget for and we're prepared in advance to have medication in the house. Now, something that you may or may not know about France and some other countries is that we cannot go into a supermarket and buy medication. We don't have any sort of drug stores where you can just walk in and pick it up. You can't walk into a pharmacy and pick it up either. So we have to physically go up to the counter in the pharmacy and we have to ask for the medication that we want. And then we are limited by law to how much we can and cannot buy. So stockpiling actually takes a deal of planning here. So I can only go in and buy two or three packets. I can't remember now. Is it two or three packets, Mike? There's three in France, I think. Three in France. Yeah. I can buy three packets of either paracetamol or three packets of ibuprofen or th I can buy three packets of, say, decongestant. But I cannot buy any more than that. And that is, that's a legal thing here. Um, I, I don't think of it as the nanny state. I think of it as the fact that that actually, um, you know, we shouldn't be overbuying medication. We, we don't need to overbuy it. So what we do is each month we check up on how much we've got in the house and what we need. And it goes on the shopping list every single month and I go and buy some more. And what I do to get around that rule of how much I can buy I will start off in Carré, where I go shopping, and I will go to that pharmacy, and then I will come home through Poulouen, which is on the way home anyway, and I will stop in another pharmacy, and then I will come through our village, and this is all on my way anyway, and I will pick up some more. I'm not going out of my way, this is on my route. Another thing that we make sure that we've always got medication in the house is that any regular medication, and I'm the only person in the house on any regular medication, and that is only HRT, is that I pick it up in a timely manner. So I can pick it up every single month. Uh, I don't use a month's worth in a month. They kind of give me more than a month's worth in a month. But I make sure I go every single month and pick up my prescription. So I've always got some more here. So like, I. I could have gone now, it's the beginning of October, to pick up some more, but I already had an extra couple of months of medication in the house. I didn't need to go. So there's something for all of us. And you can ask us, you know, what do we buy? We buy decongestant. I always make sure I've got at least two packets of decongestant in the house. I've always got at least four or five packs of paracetamol in the house. And we can only buy a in each one pack, there's eight tablets, and that's 1,000 milligrams. Each one is 1,000 milligrams, which is one dose. And I can buy 16 ibuprofen, and each one of those is one dose. So those are the only things that we keep here. We don't keep any other medications, but leave a comment below. What medications do you keep? Oh, I'm not just thinking about something else. 
we might keep medication in the house for diarrhea, for example, in case either of us get diarrhea. But other than that, we don't really get sick. Those are the only things we keep in the house. But that's how we spread out to get what we need. And that's how we spread out the cost too. The next one, and I think it's a really important thing to add in here, that we plan for being healthy. We don't actually plan to get sick. We do everything we can to stay healthy. So we eat as healthy a diet as we can. We eat as we eat very little processed food. Not very much at all. I'm not saying we eat none, but we eat very little. We drink plenty of water. We have a really, really good sleep routine. We're in bed for 10 and we're awake by six. We're up by seven. We get regular exercise each day. We both of us um, do you know, physical activities every single day. We walk every day. I do some weight bearing exercise every day. We both use our exercise bike every day. We get out and about, we socialize, we keep our mental health well. We, you know, we make sure that we get daylight and fresh air every day. So that's something that we do. And though most of those things are, you know, pretty low cost, aren't they? And those are things that you can definitely do on a budget is to avoid getting sick. So the last part of this, and it's really important for me to share this with you about being prepared and budgeting for any, any sickness that we might get at any time, is that we keep a really well stocked house. My supermarket budget is 400 euros a month, and that also pays for things like medication. That also pays for all our food, drink, toiletries, everything. It is slightly more than we need, and it is slightly more than we need because we keep a very well-stocked house. I never have to go dashing out of the house for anything at all. Um, you may or may not know that here in France, we mainly drink um, long-life milk, so it's vacuum-packed, ultra-heat-treated milk, UHT milk, and it's shelf-stable, it lasts a long time. But when I lived in the UK, that wasn't so common, so things that I would do there is I would buy milk and I would freeze it. But things that I do here to keep a very well-stocked house, I don't need to leave the house. There is bread, there is butter, there is cheese in the freezer. If I buy eggs on offer, I break those eggs, I beat them up and I put them in a container with about four eggs in each one into the freezer. So I've always got eggs for a couple of weeks ahead in the freezer. I've always got vegetables in the freezer, Obviously, I've got meat in the freezer, fish in the freezer, but something else I like to do and just get ahead because there are days when I don't want to cook. I don't live anywhere near takeout. I don't go and buy convenience food from the supermarket. I don't eat gluten, so I can't just go and buy a pizza, things like that. So I keep meals in the freezer. And I've been so glad of that this week because I came back from the UK and I'm much, much better now, but I had a stinking cold for about 48 hours and I just pulled meals out of the freezer. So that's something that we prepare for and that we budget for, is that we are always very well stocked. There is tea, there is coffee, there is milk, there's all the toiletries and cleaning products. I don't need to go and buy bathroom tissues. There's nothing that I need. I'm very, very, very well stocked. Let me know because I know many of you share this th these thoughts and this theory to keep a very well stocked house. I don't say I have a stock pile. I have a well stocked pantry. I have well stocked cupboards. And in the same way as I always have plenty of medication in the house, there's always plenty to eat. There's always plenty to drink. There's plenty to clean up with. There's plenty to do the laundry with as well. So let's summarise this of how we are prepared financially and in organisation matters in case any of us get ill at any time. We split the cost of medication, we buy some medication and top that up as is needed, which we don't always need it, but as is needed each month. I would like to add that we don't overbuy on it because 
there is best before dates on it and we try not to keep it beyond the best before four date or we use it before the best before date so we buy medication as and when needed each and every month to stock up secondly we make sure that we keep healthy we eat well we sleep well we drink plenty of fluids all of the time and thirdly to make sure that we've spread this out like i said to you we have a bit more than generous we have a generous would i should say a bit more than needed supermarket budget so that we can always be very well stocked so we don't run out so if there's ever a time and when we talk about just not feeling well sometimes that could be just emotionally very low very low in energy it doesn't mean to say that you've got a head cold and i also want to iterate this and make it very important to you know to people to know this that you know we can't prepare for all the illnesses you know if i had a chest infection and not a head cold you know i would have gone to my doctors or i would have video called my doctor and I would have taken the medication that I was prescribed. I'm not suggesting anybody does any differently. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you do not catch a cold. I hope you do not get a cough. And I hope that you do not get a stomach upset or anything wrong with you at all. So stay healthy, stay well, and let us know in a comment below, because we read every one of them. What do you do to budget for and prepare just in case you get sick. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up. And thank you to everybody, especially who leaves a comment. We love to hear from you. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.